1-800-525-213-2138 or visit Prevnar20.com. Old man winter's moving on out, and it's time to put a spring back in your step. Hi, Teresa here from the local Red Wings shoe store, and I'm here to tell you that Red Wings are not only for hardworking individuals. We've got footwear for every occasion, and here at Red Wings Shoes, we have partnered with Volumental and Superfeet to offer 3D printed orthotics. So stop on in and check it out for yourself at 3003 Main Avenue in Fargo. Red Wings Shoes for ultimate durability. This is Weather and Ag in Focus with Bridget Regal, Justin Storm, and Dean Wysocki. And welcome to Weather and Ag and Focus. Thanks for joining us on this Wednesday. It is 106 and temperatures outside 24 degrees. Hey, you want to join in on the program today? Ask some questions. Cold. Feel free to do so. Give us a call on the Red Wing Shoes phone line. That's 701 293 9000. Emails to the program are weather or ag at flagfamily.com. Comment boxes on Facebook and YouTube, Acres TV, and as well. Bridget's personal phone call or I mean, cell phone. You take, can send some messages there. Taking calls there all taking the time. Taking calls and messages. Right. All fun and great ways to get on the show today. And we got some fun things on the show. We got a rundown on the forecast. Got some snow coming in uh, tomorrow night that will bring in some accumulating snow for some of us by Friday morning. And as well, the the bigger behemoth coming in over the weekend and into the beginning of next week. Who's seeing a foot of snow? May someone be seeing two feet of snow? Now, look. More than two feet of snow? Y'all didn't make this a big deal here not that long ago. I heard you saying, oh, we might get some snow, but it didn't seem like a big deal. And suddenly, it's a big deal. Yeah, there's still a few people that aren't on board with it. There, were, there were preliminary flakes this morning when I got to Fargo. Yeah, I just want to point that out. Where'd that? those come from, kids? Yeah, they came from the sky, of course, Bridget. They fell from <laughs> the sky. Thanks for Actually, I'm pretty out. sure I saw a hot air balloon with one of those snowmakers that the ski resorts have, and they were just kind of floating with the wind. In a hot air balloon, In a hot say. air balloon, yeah. There's but a lot they of hot used, air here, They not used a balloon. mirrors and military technology, so that way they could camouflage into the blue skies above. It just looks See, like now, a cloud of snow falling I, down. I ran into John this morning, oh, man. and he said that when they were out spraying... It was actually, it wasn't snowflakes, it was actually white ash that was coming out of the chemicals that they were spraying. Like it is Tuesday. Meal. It's Wednesday. They're a day late on spray day, but that that's according to John, that that was actually ash from the chemicals that they're spraying. Mm. I'll give you ash. That's just dumb. You give me a <laughs> kick in the ash. Oh, what'd you say? Got that right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I thought I heard something else there. Goodness, and there's so much chaos. Right. Anywho, yeah. we're here and we're saying all PG words. And what is the weather going to be with that S word in it? You know, an air duct. Oh my no. God. Okay, it's happening. Everybody stay calm. What's the procedure, everyone? Stay calm. What's the procedure? Stay calm. Wait, 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 wait. wait, wait, wait. Everybody calm down. Snow is in the forecast. Not today, though. We've got sunny skies out there. Some high clouds starting to spill in from the west. And. We are looking at a chilly day today. If when you factor in that north breeze, we're looking at temperatures today into the mid to upper 20s across the area. And as we head into tonight, we'll see those winds go a little lighter out of the northeast and temperatures dropping off into the upper teens. Cloudy skies tomorrow. Clipper system will ride in out of the west late in the day. Most of the day should be fine, just cloudy with highs around 30. Snow develops towards evening and then starts to ramp up overnight tomorrow night. Uh, we're looking at one to three inches here in the FM area, uh, but a band from about Bismarck through about Ellendale, Sisseton over towards Fergus could see three to six. And then uh, we'll see a break on Friday and most of Saturday, but late Saturday, especially Saturday night, we'll start to see light snow overspread the area. And then that will crescendo into moderate and then eventually heavy snow on Sunday, especially Sunday afternoon, Sunday evening. Uh, into Sunday night looks to be the worst part of this storm, but it'll last into Monday with wind on that second storm, not any wind on this first storm. What was that word you used? Crescendo. Crescendo. Sometimes I'll start a sentence and I don't even know where it's going. I just hope I find You never heard of that? Way. No, I've never heard of crescendo. You play music, right? Yeah, we use it in music all you the time. use it in music I all never, the time. Music got cut when I was a kid. It's probably a good thing. Probably. For you. Or I'd be going around saying words like crescendo. Crescendo. Later, we'll work on others. I need a dictionary here. What's we'll it even on. mean? Crescendo, your notes go up. Up. 
So, oh. so your snowfall is going to crescendo. It's going to continue oh, to increase. Okay. I see it. We see he learned Way something to new today. Way to use a big word today, Dean. He learned something new from us today. Yesterday. <laughs> Usually I, it's the other way around. I have like, spent so much days. time <laughs> like, with you like, two. What does this emoji mean? <laughs> Why is the volcano exploding? I've spent so much time with you two that yesterday someone asked me what I thought about the storm that would be coming in later in the week, like this weekend, Sunday, mm-hmm. et cetera. And I said, well, from what I understand, it's going to be more to the west and the south. Yeah. And I did that with the my hand hands. Motions. And the motions. The people I, were ta- I was talking to looked at me and said, this is very weather girl of you. <laughs> Stick her in front of a chroma yes. key while she's good to go. Why not? I'm not the weather one here. But and occasionally I pay attention yeah. to y'all. All of our models are pointing and this is minimum of 8 to 12 inches for our area. Just going to send it. Oy. Where's the milk and bread? Uh, Guys, I, I got to get milk, milk and bread. And bread. It's I'm on Jay's. Su- no. I'm supposed to be in Bismarck on Monday. This no, you is- won't be. <laughs> Trust me, you will not be in Bismarck oh, on Monday. No. Uh, Someone was asking, like, I plan on going to Duluth on Monday. I'm like, well, you can nope. plan all you want, but getting there is a whole nah, other story. Not happen. Yeah, no, we're... This will be the biggest storm of the year, and I'm thinking of it. Some of our models are printing out some incredible amounts of snow, well over a foot. Well, now, yeah, it looks like a solid bet for one to two feet of snow from areas of uh, eastern, northeastern South Dakota into southern and central Minnesota. Yeah. I mean, it's possible. But, I mean, I, but that's it, down it would, there. Well, that's but, a possibility. Yeah, yeah but potential. here's the thing: our models keep inching it further north each each day. So we've gone from six to eight to twelve in the last. 24 hours in the last yeah. day or two of course this is these are preliminary yeah. potentials it's not the actual forecast but there will be that's somebody what the models have been there doing. will be somebody that gets 20 inches out of this storm this is not the forecast i asked i'm not for. saying it's here 20. i just want to point nice. that out <laughs> yeah, right on yeah i'm thinking we'll get pretty close to a foot here. i could use 20 inches of snow yeah, yeah, have fun have fun blowing that not an issue for me not an that- issue for me that snowfall, I mean, you're looking at heavy moisture systems. I mean, this is not going to be something you're going to be able to move with a shovel, much less your snowblower. No, this is, well, the snowblower should, if you're not going at Mach 2. How else do you blow snow? I mean, have you ever seen me mow my lawn in a road gear? Come on now. I mean, when you when you get to a certain amount of snow, you got to crank her down from, thirst, uh, from third gear into first because He's, you just... You're just killing the motor because it can't fling that much weight. He said thirsty because there's a cup holder on his. Ha ha. Wait, what? <laughs> I, ca- I called you out. <laughs> I just got completely lost. I'm sure. Hey, coming up on the program today, uh, of course, with another check on the forecast, for those of you that are just joining us, we'll retouch that forecast for that big storm coming in over the weekend. But we got some ag topics that we'll be getting to today. One of those is going to be about ammonia-powered engines. Now, I've heard of hydrogen-powered engines, but not (laughs) ammonia. So we'll touch on that one a little bit, as well as NDSCS starts precision ag programs. Mm -hmm. And a new ag tech company is coming to Fargo. So we have three fun topics we're going to talk about today. We have a very last-minute guest from NDSU. That's Lisa Peterson and Carl Hopi. They're going to be talking us to about how cold weather and I believe snow impacts cattle health Well, in advance of this big storm coming what, in. What perfect timing. As I was on my way to the studio today, uh, Lisa reached out to me because we, okay, believe it or not, we didn't have a guest for today. Today is our LRC special starting at 2 o'clock, 2 to 5 on the Jay Thomas Show. And I'd planned for that, that we would be talking about, heavily about our weather as we preempt that show. And Lisa reached out and said, do you want to talk about livestock as we prep for this heavy win- winter storm that's coming? I think well, it's yes, a great Lisa. Idea. Yes, I <laughs> that do. Would, that would be that would well, so well, Lisa, timing. Yeah, Lisa and Carl will be joining us at one thirty today. Think about this: there is good potential for some areas mm-hmm. to double how much snow they've gotten this year oh, in, one in one storm. Yes. I mean, yeah. we could double how much snow we've gotten we this yeah. entire year. Mm-hmm. Yep, we we and really. And then could. there's another storm after that. And frankly, with this snowfall, because our temperatures have been so nice, and once again. For about the third year in a row, we are right down the pipe for calving season, lambing. I mean, it's it's baby animal season out there, Yes. and now it's going to storm. Well, I think most people didn't expect it to just with how mild this winter has been. I mean, it's been dry for the most part, and it's been very warm. And these March and April storms, they're not unheard of. They happen all the time. 
Well, just after a winter like this, you probably wouldn't have expected one to be ripping through here. But according okay. to the LRC, which will be breaking down a lot here in the next hour, this is the same we portion saw. of the cycle that hit over Christmas that gave us three inches of rain, a foot of snow out west. It came back through, when was that, February something, yeah. early February, and it gave us another inch of rain, ice from mm-hmm. Grand Forks to Fargo, snow out west, I think six inches. And now it's coming back, and it's coming back pretty good where someone could get over two feet of oh, snow. Psst, psst, hey, by the way. By the way, it's not Easter yet. Is it there always, a goose behind me? It always, no, no, the murder chickens are outside today. Ah. But we frequently get storms, especially up until Easter. Easter yes. is uh, next right. weekend. March to this early is, April. This is our weather. This mm-hmm. is what we do. So they're very, very con- well, let's say they're not out of the norm to get these storms. March in and April. March. We get them all the Even time. April. We get a one to two yep. foot snowstorm every other year, if yep. not almost every year, somewhere in the. But northern you think plains. you know we get th- we skate through so far this winter so unscathed. <laughs> it's like ah, early spring. Old man there winter knocking is. at the door. Yeah, there it is. Yep. Mother nature. Just gonna send it. Why not? Give us a whole season's worth of snow in a month. I say just <laughs> send it. <laughs> it might, right. You watch what you wish for between now and early April. Suddenly. <laughs> you could maybe throw on a couple feet of snow. Yep. Snowmobile <laughs> rentals this. are going up this weekend, guys. Well, oh, should the people that haven't had their snowmobiles out will at least have a chance to get them out now. Now yeah. they've all been summarized at this point. They might be. They've all been right? put away in stores. And when you think about um, just economy wise that's really affected a lot of our winter sports areas that haven't been able to do the regular ice fishing snowmobile runs all of that and you know we were out at wild rice uh over here in uh just south of town here and uh they have their you know big meat raffle tonight and then they've got the big honor flight stuff this weekend and uh even there i mean because they're right along the one of the main snowmobile trails and they said yeah their business has hurt so far this uh this, this season makes a big difference yeah. with the changes we've had just with our weather patterns right now. Mm-hmm. But we will figure that out. Spring is coming. And that's why today we're also giving away a $10 gift certificate from Justin Storm. Where? It's from my back pocket <laughs> that that's I got from them. Cheyenne Gardens. They are going to be doing again garden or Cheyenne Gardens trivia where every single day between now and the 12th of April so for the next uh, three and a half weeks we'll ask you a daily garden trivia question and if you're the first person to call in and get it right well you're going to win yourself a $10 certificate to Cheyenne Gardens that'll be valid between April 15th and I believe June or July 31st how many so can I have? spring how many can I have you can only win once Yes, we have caller ID, we have logs, we know if you've won something before or on another show. You can't win if you've already won something from another show in the last 30 days. Now, what about me? I mean, not, oh, not all the callers, but well, me? Well, I got about 15 for us to share. So. <laughs> I like the way hey, you think. They got some fun selections over there. You should check them out, Cheyenne Gardens. They're just 10 minutes north of Fargo. Uh, and we'll be doing that coming up during the show as well. But is our guest coming up at 120? Or are they at 130? I think 130. they're at 130. So how about uh, as we wait for our guests to arrive, we can come back after the American Egg Network. We have a chance to give away that gift certificate for Cheyenne Gardens. Mm-hmm. Oh, we've got something else we can give away too. What's that, it, Dean? You, your car? Is it your car? I'd love your car. Mine just like <laughs> no, I was gonna give mine away your just car. crapped out. I was driving <laughs> and it's all like, this car is moving more than it should be at 70 <laughs> miles an hour. I'll We're hook, not going to drive it anymore. I'll hook a tow rope on you and haul you halfway home. See, there you go. <laughs> and we got spaghetti that feed tickets great. to give away. Oh, look we, at that. We could do that today or we could do that uh, tomorrow. Hmm. You decide. Well, let's see. Uh, we'll think about it. We'll okay. run down the next couple segments. That's a possibility. Got it. Okay. Let's go get catch up with the American Egg Network. We will come back with all sorts of good fun shenanigans and you get us all afternoon. Mm-hmm. Be right back. You need to keep an eye out no matter where you live. And I'm trying to scare people, but it is really time to pay attention to your surroundings. We always think New York City, Los Angeles, Chicago. You want to put the fear of God in Americans? Attack small town America. It could just be a lone wolf like Barakat here in Fargo that says, okay, it's time. The Jay Thomas Show, weekdays at 2 on 970 AM and 93.1 FM, WDAY Radio.
The next coffee club with Janae and Ronnie. We'll find out who's playing in DJ's Lounge Inside Sweet Shots. And Reese and Riley's is going to join us and I'm sure bring us something delicious. All kinds of fun stuff on the coffee club. Plus, there's an impending storm headed our way. We'll talk about that and your weekend travel plans. Join us for the coffee club. The coffee club. Weekdays 830 to 11 on AM 970 and 93.1 FM WDAY. Fargo. This is John Adams, your host of Talk of the Town. My show is designed to highlight everything great about the city, the valley, and the country in which we live. I've had the great fortune of meeting, working, and living with wonderful people in the Fargo-Moorhead area, and I want to bring their stories to you. Human interest stories, sports, timely Bust topics above, that affect all of us in the Red River Valley. Cut out value Talk is down 99 cents at midday on Wednesday, 92.38. This is the American Ag Network. Non-attorney paid spokesperson. Could your house go into foreclosure? Are you behind on your mortgage payments? Does it seem like the bank has no interest in helping you save your home? And you feel like you have nowhere to turn for help? Then we have good news for you. Foreclosure Protection Services can help save your home as they specialize in foreclosure assistance. That's all they do. If you're behind on your mortgage payments, being threatened with foreclosure, have been denied a loan modification, or been the victim of a predatory loan, it's critical that you call Foreclosure Protection Services now at 800-926-1701. Their network of attorneys and their agents are available to speak to you now. If you're behind on your mortgage payments, Foreclosure Protection Services can help stop the foreclosure process. Call today before it's too late. New laws are in effect that may save your home. Call Foreclosure Protection Services now at 800-926-1701. 800-926-1701. That's 800-926-1701. A few numbers ahead of the close. Hogs, April down 60, 85, 22. March feeders uh, down 55, 250, 12. And April live cattle down 32, 187, 72. This is the American Ag Network. The star in your life, the brightest gift in the world. Name a star after them. This is Rocky Moselle with International Star Registry. For $59 and a call to 800 282 3333 or visit starregistry.com, you can name a star for birthdays, weddings, or even memorials. Over 45 years, we have named millions of stars for celebrities and individuals from around the world. The star you name will be recorded in book form in the U.S. Copyright Office. Visit starregistry.com or call 800 282 3333. Offer not valid in all states or where prohibited by law. Loans are subject to lender approval. See website for details. Honey, the credit card bill came, and we're maxed out. Maxed out cards. Rent is due. We just need some extra cash to help us get by. Maybe we should go to 27cash.com. With our bad credit? 27cash.com is one of the largest personal loan networks. They can help people with any type of credit get up to $5,000, and cash can hit our bank account as soon as tomorrow. When you need extra cash, go to 27cash.com. That's 27cash.com. 27cash.com. Weather and Ag in Focus on WDAY Radio. And welcome back to Weather and Ag in Focus. Uh, thanks for rejoining us. Hey, pro, uh, phone number to the program today, the Red Wing Shoes Shoe Line. They might need it. They might need it. 701-293-9000. You're going to use that number to call into the studio because it is time for Cheyenne Gardens Garden Trivia. Be the first person to answer my trivia question correct. You win yourself a $10 gift card to Cheyenne Gardens. It's a valid April 15th through the spring. Head on over there and check out their wide selection of trees, shrubs, and bedding plants. Largest in the area, that's Cheyenne Gardens, just 10 minutes north of Fargo. Let's see here. So here's your trivia question for today. What flower was once more valuable than gold in the 1600s? I got it. What flower was once more valuable than gold? Hard to think that a flower could be more valuable than gold. I bet if it was a petunia in an onion patch, it would be priceless. Oh, that is priceless. I told you I'm growing that this year, right? You are. And One petunia in an onion patch. We played that song yesterday, and I had several listener comments because they missed it. They were very glad you they hadn't oh, heard it in a while. They were I really it. missed it, too. Hey, we got. Hi there, caller. What's your name? Jordan. 
Arden, what do you think the answer is? What flower is once more valuable than gold in the 1600s? I'm just going to guess a rose. It is not a rose, but I appreciate you listening and calling, Arden. Have a great day. Try again. Again, that phone number to the program, 701-293-9000. Your trivia question for a $10 certificate to Cheyenne Gardens. What flower was once more valuable than gold in the 1600s? Hi there, caller. What's your name? Brenda. Brenda, what do you think the answer is? Marigold. It is not a marigold, but thanks for listening. Thanks for calling. Try again. Hi there, caller. What's your name? Jeff. What do you think the answer is? I think it was a good old tulip. It was a tulip. And in fact, it was the bulb of the tulip that was traded as currency. In the 1600s, it was more valuable than gold. Wow. I had no idea. That blew me away. Not today anymore, huh? Well, probably not too much. (laughs) You probably get a lot of tulips for some gold, though. Okay, weirdly, I remember that from my fifth grade history class because my teacher, Mrs. Belinsky, made sure we had that on a test once. Really? Yeah. You so got a good I, memory. I, I knew that one. Oh, I am full of useless knowledge. You're Stick f- around. Watch what I do. I love uh-huh. useless knowledge. <laughs> well, hey there. Stay on the line here for a moment. I'm going to put you on hold. Our producer will get a little bit of information from you, and then you can pick that up anytime, Monday through Friday, before 5 o'clock in the afternoon. And again, that uh, certificate will be valid after April 15th when they open. Right on. Very good. And we'll do a garden trivia again tomorrow sometime between 1 and 2 o'clock. Again, that's brought to you by Cheyenne Gardens, just 10 minutes north of Fargo. Well, if you didn't win trivia, you might need a little consolation. Might need to feel better later today. Well, if you're out shopping, preparing for a storm, swing by the liquor store. You could pick up North Dakota Sweet Crude. If you haven't tasted North Dakota Sweet Crude or Sweet Crude Orange, you truly are missing out. It has a smooth cinnamon and spice flavor. The orange has the same smooth finish with a splash of orange. And you could be mixing all sorts of great drinks here in the month of March. A crude leprechaun, an orange crush, Dakota Sweet Lemonade, or a crude apple. 60 more recipes can be found at crudespirits.com. Ask your liquor store for it by name, North Dakota Sweet Crude. Right on. Enjoy. I gotta try some of that. I still haven't had. I it's haven't real, tried it yet. It's real good. Dean drank really the bottle good. in the office. And that's gone long. That <laughs> kind of looking forward to at least sampling it. Mm-hmm. Nope. You gotta be faster than that, man. Yeah, that's what you get for working remote. I guess so. Mm-hmm. Car issues, man. Take advantage. Of that. <laughs> yeah. I'm sure see, there's. I'm sure you can get it repaired somewhere. Yeah. See, see, the thing is, I don't know if I want to throw money at it. It's the big thing. But, but, wait for it. One of our ag headlines is, what if you decided to put in an ammonia-powered engine? Well, let's talk about it, because now I'm all ears. So (laughs) there are, uh, there's always been research done on hydrogen power, Mm -hmm. but now there is a research opportunity where they're looking at using ammonia. Now, there's a whole long discussion of what they would have to do to make that work, and it has to do with the fuel mix and how they get that... um, what do they call it? The vortex-like pattern of air fuel mixture in the engine cylinder. We'll have, if you'd like, I'll draw yeah. diagrams of that later. My couple of college classes in ag mech, I'm sure I'm right up to speed on that. But what this would do is, versus using hydrogen, even though ammonia is a really challenging fuel to burn efficiently, if you can do this and make it more efficient, it's actually a pretty useful and efficient fuel to burn. Hmm. Um, with the EVs that are coming out, all these electric vehicles, The lithium demand is expected to exceed 2.4 million metric tons by 2030. That's a significant increase over the 130,000 current metric tons being mined. So look at this as another fuel source and option using ammonia. Most of us think about it as anhydrous ammonia that we're using for a nitrogen source in the field, but maybe it's going to run your engines. Vroom, vroom, vroom. That that might help you. Vroom, vroom. (laughs) Very cool. I was just doing a little side side thing here on, on, what, on what the byproduct of burning ammonia would be. Can I guess? Yeah, go for it. Is it water? It is not water. Well, it might be, but that's not the main byproduct. What is it? Nitrogen oxide. Hmm. Can Nitrogen be- oxide is the byproduct of burning or combusting ammonia. However, laughing, you, guess, can, right? you can remove it by using hmm. a catalyst. Uh, that can be kind of like a catalytic converter. converter. Uh, you do the vehicle. same thing to uh, get rid of the nitrogen so, so oxide. You could, so you could be burning that and be laughing the whole way home. 
Hey, could you bring your car in tomorrow? I have an idea. Maybe we'll try to convert this. I'll, <laughs> well, I'll, pull, think in, it's, I'll pull an anhydrous tank to town with my pickup and see what I we can do. I think it's different than nitrous oxide. <laughs> we'll find out. <laughs> it says nitrogen oxide emitted causes acid rain. We were over acid rain in the 80s. It's all fine now. Oh, yeah. my bad. No, we're yeah, we're good. good to go on that <laughs> now. We're good. Don't, don't worry about that. No oh, worries then. Even the hole in the ozone layer must have self-healed because oh, that, we don't that talk did, about that, that anymore. It actually did after, you know, the 80s and everybody got rid of their aqua velva hairspray. Yeah. No, no. That was an aftershave aqua velva. Aqua net oh, aqua was my net. hairspray. Sorry. Okay. Because, dude, <laughs> I, I had the whole bangs thing going on. So, Okay. <laughs> It is 1.30 in the afternoon. We want to get our guests online, and we will do that and return. Get those questions ready. You can join us on the Red Wing Shoe shoe Line, uh -huh. 701-293-9000. Hi, it's Chief Meteorologist Dean Wysocki. Join me, Meteorologist Justin Storm, and Ag Director Bridget Riedel for our Spring and Summer Outlook Special, Wednesday, March 20th, beginning at 2 p.m. We'll break down when you can expect this summer's biggest storms and more using the LRC weather forecasting model. Our friend and founder of the LRC, Gary Lezak, will join us, plus we'll take your questions and comments. That's the Spring and Summer Outlook Special, Wednesday, March 20th, beginning at 2 p.m. on WDAY Radio, brought to you by Jiffy Lube of Fargo and Border Plains, Plains Ag. This is a shout out to all hardworking farmers and ranchers. If you're looking for the cream of the crop in post frame construction, look no further than Thor Buildings. Because let's face it, having the right size building for your equipment or livestock is crucial for your success. At Thor Buildings, they'll design your building for max efficiency, customized to tackle the seasonal weather in your neck of the woods. Post frame construction tailored to your livestock and ag needs. Buildings built better, stronger, and built to last. So when it's time to put the hammer down, build with Thor. Visit ThorBuildings.com today. Pucklet Chevrolet Buick GMC in Valley City makes it easy to find your next Chevrolet Buick GMC or pre-owned vehicle by offering a great selection at our best prices possible. Good afternoon, I'm Tom Tucker, WDAY News First. The West Fargo City Commission has voted 3-2 to two against using city-owned land to allow for the construction of a turn lane into the Shea West Garden Center. That's something the business owners have been pushing for. City Commissioner Mandy George. We have a capital improvement um, economic or economic development fund, which has been voted on by the public for um, money to help small businesses specifically. We have funds available for this. And so it, it's just this, this is a perfect situation where that money could be used to help them. George says the city needs to back small business. A proposal that would raise the minimum wage in Minnesota to $15 an hour is advancing in the state Senate. The Labor Committee passed the measure yesterday, allowing it to be part of a larger employment bill that will be considered later in the session. The proposal would raise the minimum wage for all businesses to $15 an hour this year and mandate a $1.25 increase each year after that. The rate would reach $20 an hour in 2028. The state's current minimum wage for large businesses is $10.85, while the minimum for small businesses is $8.85. The Minnesota Twins' home opener April 4th will include a tribute to the two police officers and firefighter paramedics shot and killed while responding to a domestic call in Burnsville last month. Tom Tucker, WDAY and WDAYRadioNow.com. PetroServe USA has great March specials for you. Spoonable edible cookie dough, four fifty nine. Oh, ice cream pints, all flavors, four ninety nine. Old Trapper, ten ounce, twelve ninety nine. Eight ounce Red Bulls, three for six fifty. Sixteen ounce Red Bull, two for seven dollars. Nestle twenty eight packs of water, four ninety nine. Girl Scout cookie bites, four ninety nine. Two pack electronic lighters, ninety nine cents. Any size fountain, coffee or cappuccino, eighty nine cents. PetroServe USA, helping America fuel better. You know there's one near you. USA. Attention farmers! Are unexpected breakdowns leaving you stranded in the field? Don't let downtime hinder your harvest. Advanced Diesel Repair is your trusted partner in getting you back in action fast. Their technicians specialize in swift diagnostics and top-notch repairs, ensuring your diesel equipment is up and running in no time. With Advanced Diesel Repair, you can count on reliable service and minimal disruptions to your farming operation. Advanced Diesel Repair, conveniently located off the I-94 Wild Rice exit and online at ADRofHorace.com. This is Weather and Ag in Focus with Richard Riedel, Justin Storm, and Dean Wysocki. Welcome back to Weather and Ag in Focus. Thank you for joining us here and spending your afternoon. Because we are here all day, ladies and gentlemen. 
The weather special starts on Jay Thomas's show from two to five. Yeah, we so stole his show again. We did. We did. He's he might even let us talk. Occasionally, <laughs> I think he's going to let luck. us talk a lot. He's yeah. going on vacation tomorrow, he's already in so vacation I don't think mode. he wants to talk. <laughs> we will see how this day goes, but we are going to have a great day because we have two excellent guests. I want to welcome Lisa Peterson. She is an NDSU livestock specialist. She is joining us, as is Carl Hoppy. I think I'm saying Hoppy right. He is also an extension livestock specialist from Carrington. Lisa is at the Central Grasslands Research Station at Streeter. And so, Lisa, Carl, how are you both doing today? I'm doing wonderful. How about you? Fabulous. I'm not sure if we have Lisa's audio quite yet. I think we're working on that. Okay, we're going to keep that up. So, Carl, if you heard us talking a little bit earlier, there's some winter storms that are going to be coming the next few days. With the nice weather that we have had thus far, are are we concerned for our livestock producers as to the big switch and temperature change and what that could do to some of their cattle, especially if we're in the midst of calving season, maybe some lambing as well? Oh, sure. It can be quite the problem this year. We had a great winter. Uh, it's been nice. and We haven't seen this type of weather for quite a few years. And this year it appears to uh, be fairly, I'd call it's been a sweet winter so far. Actually, it's spring now, so we've had a nice winter. <laughs> and there's a forecast of a spring storm coming up, and we're not used to that. Last year, we had snow up to our armpits, and now this year, it's going to be quite a bit. I don't know what we're going to have. But for producers to be aware, and I, I was talking earlier today with another producer saying, you know, when you get to be a certain age, you know all this stuff, but you need reminders once in a while. And I remember that being told to me when I was 20 years old from some 60 year old guy was telling me that, well, now I replace the roles and I'm in that realm. So we need reminders every once in a while. So with our cowherds out there, of course, the first thing you want to do is have them in a location that has some protection away from the wind. And hopefully there's feed available to them and feed is located nearby. So in case we have an extended weather event, we can provide feed to them. And then the next question comes down to is these newborn calves or calves that are soon to be newborn, or the calves that are just a couple weeks old, we need to provide some extra protection for them too. And that extra protection can easily be a shed, it can be a barn, it can be windbreak, it should be a calf shelter. It can be a lot of different things. The guy just needs to have an opportunity for the animals to be there. One of the real challenges you run into is, is trampling. Oh, and hang on. A Wait a sec. If pe- there's that yes. much excitement that there's trampling going on in the barn? What is happening there? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, we all got to cuddle together, right? They're hurting animals. <laughs> they got to cuddle. We got to be close to each other. We are not cuddling and of right course, here. When you cuddle too much, <laughs> <laughs> and when you cuddle too much, what happens? You fall down, right? Okay. <laughs> well, cattle fall down, they fall asleep, whatever. And next thing you know, some big old cow decides to stomp on her newborn calf. And oh. that's not good. No, no, yeah. not at all. And so that's actually, <laughs> besides that that safety reason, uh, you know, or that, that potential of having calf in with mama cow, that's another reason for a calf shelter, actually. Wouldn't you say, Carl? I mean, they, they have multiple. Oh, a big deal. Yeah, they have multiple reasons. But what are just a few of those? Why you see those little white huts scattered around for protection? Well, protection, that's right. The other one's protection from the weather. The other one's protection from cattle. The other one is for uh, for um, just warmth. They can get away from the elements and stay in where it's nice and dry. And that leads to the next problem. Sometimes they get a little bit too warm and too wet at the same time. Now you have health problems. So we got to bed those buildings down, create some air, create some fresh air, and keep things uh, comfortable for the calves inside so they don't get sick. That's a challenge of this snowy, cold weather that we possibly could get. And, and Carl, with um, with this storm coming in, I mean, it's not unheard of. We get these March storms even into April sometimes. But with such a mild winter and uh, the livestock being out there, pro- you know, they're used to the mild weather. Would this be a more dangerous situation or more of a shock to the system, uh, to our livestock, seeing that, uh, you know, the mild winter that we've had or it doesn't really make a difference? Well, I always make the analogy, you know, when you're used to 30 above, putting on a heavy coat when it's 30 below is, is a big deal. When it's zero out, eh, you may, you kind of get used to the weather. Same thing with cattle. They produce extra hair so you have the insulation on them. The problem you run into, though, is we've had nice weather. So they've been shedding their winter hair. They've been scratching uh... themselves trying to get rid of it. 
And when you lose your hair, you lose some of your insulation. Your I know. Wet, your, oh, believe yeah. me, I know. <laughs> Not a good deal. So, yeah, that's the challenge that we're going to have right now. Of course, the worst part about this whole thing is if you get rain. And rain wets down the cow's hair, and that really loses their insulation ability in the hair. And consequently, they get chilled out a lot quicker, especially a newborn calf. Mm. Cold rains are the worst. Well, and that is absolutely the truth because when you get, it's no different than we being out in an awful cold weather system. We don't want our livestock doing that either. And right now, I don't think our temperatures are supposed to fall quite that far. But if, in fact, we did, are we at a point in time where we'd be concerned about um, freezing ears and tails? Or are we not quite, you know, what's, the, what's the right temperature where we'd start to get concerned about that with some of our calves? Well, anytime it's below freezing, you run in the risk of, and freezing 32 degrees, you run the risk of having uh, frozen ears or frozen tails. And part of the problem there is not necessarily the cold weather, but mom loves her calf so much. She just has to lick him and groom him and keep that baby just nice and lovable. And they lick their ears until the ears are wet. And next thing you know, the ears, even though they were dry and, and viable, uh, because cow licked the uh, ears long enough, they eventually just got wet and then they freeze off. I'm concerned about Dean, this whole lack of hair, somebody licking your ears. This is a problem for you, pal. <laughs> Things could go south. Did you, did you just say somebody licking his ears? Well, yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, boy. He's, yeah, this, oh, this show is really going sideways now. <laughs> Man. You never, you never know when someone might come along. I'm just telling you to be careful. So. Yeah. Okay. I'm so, up for a lot of strange things, but I'm not sure if I'm up for that. Uh, Why don't we try it first? Uh, <laughs> you're on. You can do it. Yeah, no. So Lisa, I think, is able to join us now. Lisa Peterson. And Lisa is also a livestock extension, extension specialist. She's at the Grasslands <laughs> Research Station in Streeter. Okay, Lisa, a lot of your producers have had dry lots right now. If we get a foot of heavy, wet snow or more, how's that going to affect what they are doing for their calves at this and their cows at this point for comfort. Well, <clears throat> I'm sorry. Uh, I could not make technology work today. It always makes you look stupid, <laughs> but um, you know, I think one of the things that, and I'm, I don't know if Carl said this, but bedding is going to become really paramount um, in these storms. Um, I once heard a, a very respected um, veterinarian say, that calves need 18 to 20 hours of sleep a day. And in order for them to get good sleep, they must have a dry place to lay. And so if we get all this snow and these lots have been dry, and honestly, the guys who are pasture calving have been pasture calving on, you know, dry grass, those calves are going to need a dry place to lay. And so bedding will become really important in these along with, you know, some type of windbreak or some type of protection um, you know, we tend to think that our corrals and our, our lots and whatnot are well protected, but even just putting some bales up that calves can get up next to, um, what can help in that regard. What, what about water intake? What does that change in a system like we might be facing? Let's say we've got five days of animals under stress. Where do we need to go to make sure that they are, uh, does water go up, consumption go up basically? It's not going to be terribly cold, but I'm just curious where that's going to go for them. Actually, no, if I, I can don't know that. It... Go ahead, Carl. I was just going to say the worst thing yeah. that can happen is that those cattle don't get water and then they tank up. Oh. Um, but go ahead, Carl. Well, normally when you get a freezing weather like this, they might eat snow if if uh, there is enough, uh, if, if they've been without water long enough. A lot of times cattle will huddle together and, until, until the weather breaks, then they'll go look for water. Mm-hmm. And usually it's not that extended period of time to cause the problem. But cold weather does dehydrate an animal, so they'll need water at some point. Lisa, you used a word uh, or a phrase. You said they'll tank up. What does that mean to right. the folks who don't have livestock and aren't familiar with what that might mean? So, well, I'm trying to remember which year, but several years ago, for example, the power was out in northwestern North Dakota. And... Um, guys couldn't get water you know their pumps didn't work everything was frozen and so those cattle had been out of water for you know a day or two maybe more so they all went and drank and they inhaled all this water and it can really screw up um 
I think it screws up the level of hydration in their system, and so it kind of causes some brain issues and some cognitive issues in those cattle. And so it's very counterintuitive. You don't want to say, well, you know, restrict water, but really in those cases you want to, if they haven't had water for several days um, because of, you know, powers out wherever they are, um, you, you need to be a little bit careful with that. Kind of like people, they drink too much water too fast, they feel crappy afterwards. That can happen. Yes. Mm. Yeah. And are calves, as, are you as worried about calves getting to a water tank as the cows? Because the calves are pretty much all relying on mama cow at that point, correct? Um, you know, these older calves, so, you know, especially in the eastern part of the Dakotas, Minnesota, a lot of people calve early to avoid mud when they're calving. And so these older calves that are three months old are going to need water. Um, you know, if they're just baby calves born in the last week, they may not need so much water. But our, our three-month-old calves that were born in January probably are going to need water and access to water. Oh, I have no doubt that they're probably going to get a little bit concerned while they're out there. So to summarize, you're talking about windbreaks, plenty of uh, hay and food. Um, if we have the bulls separated right now from the cows, anything especially we want to do for our bulls that might be in a different pasture or a different feedlot? No, oh, bulls always need some extra protection out there. There's important yes. parts that can get froze off. So mm -hmm. uh, that that's something that really is underestimated a lot of times. So we certainly need to provide some bedding, room protection for our bulls. There's a lot of dollars invested in bulls. So consequently, watching these little events like this and making sure they're taken care of is just as important as taking care of that cow and her newborn calf. Yeah, we've, we've talked a lot about bull health on the show of we late. Have. We have, uh, we have had great response, and we work with uh, Dr. Emily Fox from the Ashley Vet Clinic, who will be on with us tomorrow. We have a whole list of topics for her as well. So as we... And you know that... Go ahead, Lisa, that please That bull protection is important because the uh, spermatic uh, development is about, I don't know, 30 days plus or minus. And so especially for folks that are wanting to start breeding cattle in the next month or so, you want those bulls to be in top fertility. Yes. And so we know immediately that providing windbreak and bedding and increased nutrition will improve their fertility because it decreases the risk of their testes becoming frostbitten and frozen. Right. And just this last minute, I know those that do this, they're, they're well aware. They know what's going on. They know how to handle this. But top concerns with storm coming in where some places – could see one to two feet of snow. What are the top concerns right now when it comes to the uh, health of these animals during and post storm? Top health concern? Mm -hmm. Well, the main thing is to make sure they don't get chilled out so you don't have cold weather exposure. Of course, that can lead to pneumonia issues as well. And in newborn calves, that can lead to scours eventually. Of course, that's a very life-threatening disease in a newborn calf. So health issues are always prevented. That's the best way, which means shelter, bedding, isolation, adequate feed, all those things that can help prevent animals to get sick. Right. And Ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure, right? Absolutely. Don't forget about the, the claustrum pieces of this. You know, newborn cattle need claustrum, oh, newborn animals, but... You know, we're talking mostly about cattle need claustrum within six to eight hours of birth. And really that sets them up for a successful life and everything they do. And so I always encourage producers to have a plentiful supply of claustrum replacers um, on hand, not supplements, but replacers and milk replacer as well. Because sometimes in these storms, you know, mom doesn't want her baby back after it's been stuck in a drift somewhere, and no matter how you try, you can't force a cow to drink water, and you can't force her to take her calf back. So um, you can try a lot of tricks, but sometimes it just doesn't happen. Mm -hmm. Well, as these storms approach, and if folks want to reach out to either one of you, Carl or Lisa, and I'll have Carl go first with his contact information, and then Lisa give hers, because people may want to ask you further questions as they prepare for the winter weather. Sure. I'm Carl Hoppe, an extension livestock specialist here at the Carrington Research Extension Center. Our phone number is 701-652-2951. And I'm Lisa Peterson, uh, extension livestock and beef quality specialist at the Central Grasslands Research Extension Center. Um, you can catch me there 
or you can catch me on my cell phone, 701-226-3733, um, or even on Facebook. I'm usually pretty available there. So, Thank you both. And Lisa, anytime you want to drop me a message and say, hey, we should talk about this, always do. So you yes. all... <laughs> Sorry, my technology did not work. <laughs> not an issue. It'll, it'll work better next time, I swear. All right. So it will. Y'all have a fabulous rest of your day. All right, folks, nobody go anywhere. We have some follow-up things with egg headlines, a little, real quick check of the weather, and then the big one. The big one, weather and egg, and, or weather and egg. Jeez, uh, our that's, LRC. That's this. Friggin' summer outlook is coming Sometimes up. I'll start a sentence, and I don't even know where it's going. <laughs> it's <laughs> coming up at 2 o'clock. On the Jay Thomas Show, we'll be going over what the spring and summer looks like. It should be exciting. More on that after the break. This is a shout out to all hardworking farmers and ranchers. If you're looking for the cream of the crop in post frame construction, look no further than Thor Buildings. Because let's face it, having the right size building for your equipment or livestock is crucial for your success. At Thor Buildings, they'll design your building for max efficiency, customized to tackle the seasonal weather in your neck of the woods. Post frame construction tailored to your livestock and ag needs. Buildings built better, stronger, and built to last. So when it's time to put the hammer down, build with Thor. Visit ThorBuildings.com today. Attention all lovebirds and ring seekers. Wimmer's Diamonds proudly presents our wedding band spectacular. Join us now through Saturday for a dazzling array of wedding ring styles that will make your heart sing. With hundreds of designs to explore and try on, finding your perfect match has never been easier. Plus, stack up the savings with 10, 20, even 30% off. Swing into Wimmer's Diamonds today through Saturday and say I do to the ring of your dreams. Wimmer's Diamonds, where every love story begins. 4582 32nd Avenue South in Fargo. Don't you love an extra $100 in your pocket? Have a TurboTax expert file your taxes for you by March 31st to get $100 back instantly. Because no matter what moves you made last year, TurboTax makes them count. That means getting $100 back and 100% accurate taxes only from Intuit TurboTax. Must file by 331. Credit only applicable to federal filing fees with TurboTax full service. Offer can be modified or terminated at any time. This is Congressman Kelly Armstrong. Let's be honest. The crisis on our southern border is not hype. It's not political rhetoric. It's real. I've seen it firsthand. The Biden administration's policies have failed our communities. Here are some of the policies I support to bring meaningful border security. End catch and release. Restore remain in Mexico. Empower the states to protect our borders, including our northern border. Learn more at armstrong.house.gov. Paid for by official funds authorized by the U.S. House of Representatives. Welcome to Jiffy Lube Multicare, where car care just makes sense. Say goodbye to car talk confusion with personalized service reviews that speak straight to you. Our highly trained service technicians have your back, decoding what your car is saying and taking care of the small stuff before it becomes big stuff. From Pennzoil oil changes to tires, brakes, batteries, and more, we've got it all covered. Your car deserves the best, making you ready for whatever is next. Putting you in the driver's seat of car care? That's a job for Jiffy. Jiffy Lube, 1780 South Columbia Road, Grand Forks. It's about tradition, values, and family ties. Pucklet Chevrolet GMC's tradition of giving back to our community remains a priority. And that's why we've partnered with many local nonprofit organizations and events. And our tradition of giving this community a fair and honest offer continues. This month, save up to $10,102 on a new 23 GMC Sierra 1500 SLT. We're Pucklet Chevrolet GMC in Valley City. GMC, we are professional great. See dealer for details and 43024. Olivet Lutheran Church in Fargo invites you to join us for worship Sunday mornings at 8.30 and 10.30 and Wednesday evenings at 6. Our theme for Lent this year is Gifted for Mission, where we will reflect on Jesus' great commission to tell the story of Jesus' love for all people without exception. Worship with us Sunday mornings at 8.30 and 10.30 and Wednesday evenings at 6. For more information and to watch all of our services online, go to olivet.org. Encounter Jesus, experience grace at Olivet Lutheran Church. Weather and Ag in Focus on WDAY Radio. That sums up most of our show today, and welcome back to Weather and Ag in Focus 154 on this Wednesday afternoon. We're just about 12 minutes away from the LRC Spring and Summer Weather Outlook. We'll be going over... Uh, what the rest of the year's weather is going to look like. Is it going to be hot, cold, wet, dry? When's the big storm coming next? 
when's the heat wave going to hit? And maybe when's our last frost potential going to be? And if you want to join in on that program, you can send your questions in ahead of time to weather at flagfamily.com. Call us on the Red Wing Shoes phone line, 701-293-9000. I already got some. I've got a handful as well. People are curious. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I'll give you lots of information and how to answer it for them. This is, you know, it's it's going to be an interesting year for our ag community in terms of uh, where you're located because uh, there's going to be some sweet spots that have plenty of moisture. Oh, I gonna, love sweet spots. There's going to be like a jawbreaker there's going to be uh, some areas that have uh well below normal mm. precip so again well, that's not good. i know you'll want to know where that's at but oh uh, what kind fun of question bridget where am i going where is it going to storm no i already know where you're going and that's where the storm's going too <laughs> different question what does really well in drought conditions for a crop you know obviously there's crops they're like yeah i like a lot of water what's a crop that's like give me very little water Okay, so first things first, we got to think about what we're doing for yield. But considering our, our climate and conditions up here, what we're well suited for in super dry years, super dry years. Sunflowers come to mind. They have a tremendous taproot system that'll go way down into their soil surface mm. in order to pull moisture. Will they uh, hit the underground rivers? That they're going all the way to China. Wow. Yeah, and crazy. then <laughs> um, we will also see wheat, <laughs> small grains, barley, etc. They'll do well. <laughs> they want some timely rain, and they don't want too terribly much heat at the time of flowering, and they'll do just fine. Um, We still need to see some rainfall at the right timing for things like uh, sugar beets. Even our corn crop last year in a drier year did pretty well. And we, I think we've got enough moisture to get us started, but we're going to want some, some rainfall in in a timely manner. And uh, as we go further North, um, canola does well. Canola all likes it to be a little bit cooler. So if you can tell everybody from highway two and North, but they're going to have cooler temperatures. They'll be very happy with their canola yield, mm, yield okay. as well. All right. Well, we'll let them know coming up in our next show from 2 to 5 o'clock. Mm-hmm. So uh, if you're new to uh, our spring and summer outlook, it's similar to our winter uh, winter weather outlook. And uh, we invite callers to call in. And we invite uh, emails with questions. And, uh, again, we'll break down each month. Uh, we'll try and break it down week by week, and we'll hit those key dates, 4th of July, Memorial Day, Wee Fest, Red River Valley Fair, stuff like that. Um, so, uh, again, we encourage you to uh, to call in. We're going to hold most of the callers until the last hour between 4 and 5, but we'll take an occasional call before that. But I know we're going to be busy. Yes, we'll have yes. Gary Lezak on with us. He, he will explain a little bit about the LRC if you're new to it. Uh, I know the word is spreading up here in the Northern Plains, and a lot of people might not know exactly how it works. So Gary will kind of explain how it uh, how it sets up each year and how it works, and uh, how we use that to forecast, um, especially the bigger storms. It really does well with the bigger storms, and those are the ones you really want to key in on. Uh, this storm coming up uh, this weekend. This was again. We knew this was coming this week. Um, it's 90 days out from our Christmas storm. Uh, we're on a 45, roughly a 45, 46 day cycle this year. And so, uh, uh, we knew this was coming. This will be back in another 45, 46 days, probably with severe weather by that time we're in May. I would think if we're, <laughs> we better not be getting the snow in May. It won't. We won't. let it snow in May, no. but it has, it has, it, it has, it's it has. snowed in early I June. Know. For those uh, watching on the uh, live streams on Facebook as well as YouTube, the LRC weather special will be being streamed on WDAY 970 AM, both Facebook and YouTube. So oh, we didn't give away our spaghetti feed tickets. We'll yeah, have to we'll do, do that. that tomorrow. We'll do it tomorrow. Here's <sighs> here's the question. You can research it ahead of time. What tree does spaghetti grow on? <laughs> we'll have that answer for you tomorrow. Oh, my God. Uh, stay with us, Jay Thomas Show and the LRC Spring and Summer. Get up next.